I am visiting a website today that's entitled Help Save the Endangered Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus from Extinction. My goal today is to check the validity and the reliability of this website using a four-step process called REAL. The first step in the process is to read the URL. So going to the address bar, I notice that the URL ends in .net. .net stands for network. I know that any URL extension that ends in .com, .org, or .net can be owned by anybody. The second step in the real process is to examine the content. Now as I look through this web page, I notice that it is an attractive web page. I like the format in the, of the web page. There are pictures on this web page. First picture uh, that I noticed that caught my eye is that, that there is a tree octopus hat from 1923. Now if I access my prior knowledge, I have never seen or heard of a tree octopus hat before. There is a map of the region of where the tree octopus is supposed to live and there is also a photo of an octopus in a tree. Now, as I said, if I ask, access my prior knowledge, I know that octopus live in the ocean. So I have some question already about this photo. Also, being a desktop publishing teacher, I teach my students how to cut, copy, and paste photographs and how to paste them on top of a background image. So I know how easy it is to alter photographs. So this already has some question for me as to the reliability of the photos themselves. If I click on the Frequently Asked Questions section of the web page and I scroll down, there is a section here that I thought was interesting. What percentage of profit from tree octopus products sold on this site goes to support protecting the species? And the answer is none. Tree octopus don't need your money. They need your love and willingness to write angry letters to the editor demanding action. I have two problems with this one question. First, if the author was so concerned about protecting the species, then you would think that any of the products that he sold on this website, that some percentage of the profit would go towards protecting the tree octopus. So that's one major problem I see. Another problem I see is that they are asking people to write angry letters to the editor demanding action. Well, I teach my students in my keyboarding and desktop publishing classes that when you communicate with other people, especially in a letter, you need to use an appropriate tone and voice so that you do not offend the reader of the letter. So if I am going to receive an angry letter from someone, then I'm going to be offended and I am not going to rise to the call of action to do whatever they are asking me to do, which in this case is to protect the species. So that's another red flag that this is not a valid and reliable website. Okay, I'm going back to the home page or the information page. Now, if I want to uh, uh, go to the third step in checking the validity of this website using the real process, I want to look for the author and the author is listed at the bottom of this web page. It says address concerns to Lyle Sapato. This web page was created in 1998, updated in 2010, which is fairly current. It's still about a year ago when it was updated, but it is fairly current information. If I want to check the references of Lyle Sapato, I could do a search check in a search engine such as Bing, type in his name, and let's see what I get. Here's my list of results. The first thing that comes up is the link to the Tree Octopus website, and it says it's the website of Lyle Sapato, creator of MindGuard, maker of icons, scourge of the forces of mind control, humble servant to the Lord Kelvin, and champion of endangered tree octopi. Well, that's questionable to me. If I scroll down, here's something about the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus on Wikipedia. 
says the Pacific Northwest Triospis was an internet hoax created in 1998 by La Zapato. Okay, already this confirms what I've already suspected that this is not a valid and reliable website. So I'm going to go back to the Tree Octopus page and the last step in the real process is to check the links. Okay, so I'm going to first go to the home page by deleting up to the URL extension and the home page tells me that this is the Bato Productions Interdimensional. Your source for conspiracies and other diversions. Well, there's another red flag to me that this is not reliable information. Okay, let's add Tree Octopus. There it is in my safe link. And let's check another link within the first paragraph, which is Temperate Rainforest. Okay, it takes me to Wikipedia, which I usually tell my students not to use Wikipedia because some information can be written by anybody out there, even though it is supposed to have some type of monitoring about what is being posted. But there are some pictures and some information about the rainforest. I'm not seeing anything about a tree octopus. I'm scrolling through here. I don't have time to read all of this information. But this information would be more valid and reliable if there are references listed at the end of these articles. And let's see, there are references listed. So this makes me believe that the information is a little bit more reliable than what I have seen on the Tree Octopus website. I don't recall seeing any references listed there. Okay, so what I have done today, I have examined the validity and reliability of the Tree Octopus website using a four-step process called REAL. The four steps is to read the URL. The second step is to examine the content. The third step is to check the author and the owner of the website. And the fourth step is to check the links. Using this process, I found that the uh, Tree Octopus website was not a valid and reliable website. Now, if my students were to ask me why it's important to check the validity and the reliability of a website, this is what I would tell them. That anyone can post information to a web page, whether it is text, video, digital images, etc. Some of the information is true information. Some of the information is biased or bogus information. Okay, it's also important that they know that any URL extension that ends in .com, .org, or .net could be owned by anybody, so that's something else to look for. I believe my job is, as a teacher is to teach students how to critically assess the validity and reliability of a website. This is a very important 21st century skill that they need in order to be able to work efficiently in the future. They need the skill so that they can find information that is true, valid, reliable, so that they can solve problems and answer any questions that they may have in their jobs or their personal lives.